we'll keep it going for David Yarrow. And welcome Cindy Crawford to the stage. Now, David, you've shot some amazing subjects over the years, some amazing people, but now it's Cindy Crawford, who has been photographed, one of the most photographed people on the planet. What's that like? How do you create something that's truly authentic when you take a photograph of someone who's already uh, the subject of so much imagery in the world? You know, Cindy um, has been photographed by all my heroes. Uh, Peter Lindbergh, Dimash Elliott, so many of them, Herberts, some of the people that I used to be a, a, a scholar of, a scholar of their work, and I can never compete with what they did with their album of work, their extraordinary uh, scholars and icons in photography. I think the key to art is to be authentic, is to be different, is to be original. Don't repeat what other people are doing, have your own interpretation. You know, there are 300 people in this room, and if you ask the 300 people in this room, what is good art, everyone would give a, a different answer to what is good art. But, but I know what bad art is, and bad art is just repeating the work of other people. So when you work with someone as special as Cindy, you've got to have your own take on it. You've got to, you've got to mix it up. You've got to be different. Now, you're equally creative, so putting you on the spot now, say that. What's the next, sure, what's the next thing that you'd like to do? If it was up to you, what would you like the next collaboration to be? A beach. <laughs> That's a good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Something nautical. Uh, no, you know, it's really, I, I do think that in working with David, David has the idea that we can kind of riff on ideas, but really David has to be excited about what he's seeing through the lens. And so, He'll sometimes send ideas that I'm like, yeah, I like it, or no, like, I'm not, that isn't really what I want to do. But in the, in the end, it's his canvas, and I'm just helping him bring that to life. David, you've shot a lot of, um, it, it's too simple a word to say models. You, you, you're shooting people who know how to do, know how to command the other side of the camera. But when you shoot someone like Cindy, who's sort of the best in class, what is your process there? What are you thinking? How are you doing it differently than any of the other subjects that you've had to work with? Whoever you're photographing, and, and there's about six or seven people in this room that I've photographed regularly, uh, you just, they are all best in class of what they do. Uh, and you can't afford maybe to have a, a, an off day. I, I love pressure. There's nothing better than waking up in the morning thinking you've got, you've got to be at the best of what you do. Uh, I couldn't think of a thing worse than waking up tomorrow morning and saying, well, I can just be kind of average. So when, when, when I know that she's there, we're on it. We're, I'm, I have five hours sleep, four hours sleep, because it, it's exciting. It's a, it's a responsibility, but it's an enormous privilege. And that's the way I look at it. it to work with the, the best in the world is a huge privilege. And you can't screw it up. But also, you, you must have creative courage. I, 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 the people that I really admire are the people that roll the dice in every walk of life. Roll the bloody dice. There are a lot of people in this room that roll the dice. What's the point of being safe? Cindy, most memorable moment and most memorable location working with David? Most memorable location would have to be Montana, even though it was 30 below or whatever. Um, and it wouldn't be the time we all got COVID. Um, I would say it was, you know, like there's such a thing as like trained animals for pictures. Like you, you hear about that for movies. Oh, it's a trained dog, it's a trained this. So when David invited me to, to do, I think he showed it on the video, the first, the first image I did with him, which was in the snow in a car with a wolf. I thought they were movie wolves, like trained wolves. I didn't realize that's not a thing. Like, you can't train wild animals. So, first of all, they smell bad. Right? No, not you. Well, some of, not you, but some of the other people in the images, right? Um, per chance. But really, it was like, the wolves have a very musky smell, I'll just say. And then you're sitting in the car, 
and they're like, don't move a muscle. And, and I took that very literally. But then the trainer <laughs> started throwing raw chicken to get the wolf to look at the camera. And I was like, this is insane. <laughs> Why am I here? But then when I saw, like, the great thing about working with David is he has the image in his head. He knows when he has it. He doesn't belabor it. It's like, you know, it might take a long time to get the setup, but then once he starts shooting... I think you're actually flattering me. The worst moment that's ever happened to me. <laughs> okay, you're a good this, faker then. With, with this American icon, who I didn't know five years ago, the first day working with her, it's minus 15, and the animal trainer that looks like something like out of Game of Thrones has uh, a bit of chicken in an ice bucket, and he lost control of the chicken, and the chicken was there to control the wolf's head and the eyes, and it hit Cindy right in the face. <laughs> and she looks at me, I think, and said, that's inappropriate. <laughs> Uh, and I felt that I was Love 40 down and Roger Federer was serving from somewhere. So then, that's, I think that was the bottom, that was a low part of things. Like most memorable, yes, I'm not saying best memory of working with David, but probably most memorable, yes. Getting raw chicken chucked at you with a, like, a wolf in the car with you, yes. So the last question now for Cindy. Cindy, you've taken countless photographs for, for an editorial perspective. What's it like now doing something in the fine art realm, especially when there's a charitable cause so close to your heart? I've always wanted to play and not get stuck in, because I've already done, I've done that. So it's like, what's next? And I think that David's work speaks for itself and I felt very comfortable with him and in front of his camera and it was so collaborative that really we just figured it out as we went along and um, and then we were like, hmm, these aren't bad, and so let's do it again. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. Now, before we let Cindy and David go, I'd like to welcome uh, Nancy from the charity to say a few words about the purpose of our tonight. Yeah, these two together, over $3 million for our charity for children's cancer. It's incredible. And if you do decide to buy that piece, the pe beautiful, amazing Pepsi piece, 100% of that goes to, to charity. It's amazing. So thank you.